We had a good one at Staples last night. The Warriors trailed the Clippers by as many as 23 points, but it turned out to be the largest deficit overcome in a win this season. Golden State ended the game on a 22-5 run with a 124-117 uh, win. Steph Curry had his fourth 40-point performance this season. Here he is after that comeback win. This just shows the resiliency of this team on the road against a good Clippers team, down 23 to never feel like we're out of it, fight our way back, get within one, then go up by 10. You feel like you get deflated at that point, but we didn't. And um, just had confidence down the stretch and the maturity that we relied on um, you know, starting last year and, building and growing into this year. 13 in 0. Stephen A., how crucial was last night's win for the Warriors? I don't think it was crucial. Um, I just think it's adding dressing, you know, just adding icing to the cake that they already have and eat frequently against the Los Angeles Clippers. I just think it's one of those situations where, you know, Blake Griffin ultimately said it correctly. It's not really a rivalry because the Warriors are simply having their way with the Clippers when it counts most. And that's what this comes down to right now. They're walking around as the reigning defending NBA champions. Last night, particularly in the fourth quarter, they were toying with the Los Angeles Clippers. They were having fun out there. That's the scary part about the Golden State Warriors right now. Steph Curry iced it up. I mean, when Chris Paul was absolutely displaying his greatness, going ballistic, when Steph Curry was on the bench in foul trouble, you just saw Steph Curry. You looked in his eyes and you knew that he was going to come out there and he was going to have something to say about the outcome of this game. He was not going to stand around and watch Chris Paul put on this show. Steph Curry showed why he's the league MVP. It wasn't because of his numbers. It wasn't because of the 40 or what have you. It was because you saw that he personalized the challenge that was standing in front of him, and he conducted himself accordingly. And then you saw the troops around him. They didn't just ro play role of spectators. They, jo they joined in on the party. Andre Iguodala, Harrison Barnes, uh, Clay Thompson with that step back three, which was a beautiful shot on his part. You just saw these guys step in Draymond Green, even undersized, playing the five, being as feisty and competitive as he is, a Tom Izzo kind of guy. You just saw all of that, and you just marveled at it, and you just said to yourself with the Clippers, they have, uh, what are you going to say after this? You're up on your home turf by 23 to the undefeated, reigning, defending NBA champions, and you have a 10-point lead with five minutes left, and you still end up losing that game. Primarily, again, DeAndre Jordan is a force defensively with his shot blocking, his rebounding, etc. But because he is a liability on the offensive end of the floor, not just with free throw shooting, but he can't score unless he's dunking, that puts more of the onus on Blake Griffin and Chris Paul. And then I'm looking at Blake Griffin. You know, you, you embrace the double team. You're spinning through it. You're throwing up ill-advised shots. This dude is a tremendous player and a star in this league. But some of the decisions, you just found yourself mind-boggled. You can't afford to make those mistakes against the Golden State Warriors. The Clippers did. And the reason why the win, again, is more cake, is more icing on the cake than anything else is because the Golden State Warriors established what they already knew coming into this game. The Clippers are formidable. They are a team to be reckoned with. But they can't mess with the Warriors, period. And the Warriors showed that <laughs> in L.A. at the Staples Center last night. A devastating, demoralizing loss for the Clippers. More of the same for the Warriors. So is it too early in this basketball season to say that the Warriors now own the Clippers psychologically? I would say so. I don't think it's too early for that, Skip. And the reason I don't say it's too early for that is because the only thing that could change that is DeAndre Jordan becoming a force. Yep. How can you become a force when you have no post moves and you can't shoot from the free throw line? Completely then agree. Then it comes down to Blake and CP. That's, you can't, it, I, 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 think, I think they're owned right now. I completely agree, which is why it felt to me last night as if the Warriors actually enjoyed falling behind by 23 points with 922 left in the second quarter of that game because they knew deep down they could come back on this team. And they knew deep down, if they did come back and beat this team in its house 
from 23 down would crush their what's left of their confidence against the Warriors. And that's exactly what they began to do. And so, so we, we saw CP3 go from doubtful before the game, as we said on the show yesterday, to sure thing in the first quarter, right? That he played, and boy, did he play. He makes his seven of his seven shots in the first quarter, and it looked like the Clippers were going to roll at home. And then what started happening? To me, just as Steph Curry is shattering the mold at, at six feet three inches, slim, not, not all that physical, as the best player in the NBA, that guy, that little guy is the best player in the NBA. Their little lineup is the best lineup in the NBA, and I've never seen it quite like this, Stephen A., and I think you haven't either. You realize their small ball lineup, when they played, you mentioned Draymond at the five, and remember, he led the yes. team in assists last night with nine. He is the point right. center for the small ball lineup. So you got Steph and Clay and Harrison Barnes and Iguodala, and then Draymond as your center, that lineup averages six feet, six inches tall. Well, in today's NBA, you would say, that's impossible. You're, you're gonna get killed on the boards. And they killed the Clippers on the boards. For the game, they were up 44 to 35 in rebounds. Guess who led the Warriors, the visiting team, in rebounds? Steph had 11. Steph Curry, little Steph's, you know, thin little Steph, got 11 rebounds. Uh, you know, obviously he's got to get some loose ball, hustle rebounds, but 44 to 35 in rebounds. And those five guys I talked about in the small ball lineup, they all in plus minus had plus nights. And the three Warriors big guys, Bogut, Ezeli, Spates, the three big guys, all had minuses in plus minus. So they're way better off when they play their little lineup with their little point guard, Steph, as the MVP of the league. And he looks like he's well on his way to winning back-to-back -back MVPs. I've never seen anything quite like that. I'm running out of superlatives here, but this team, when it came crunch time in the fourth quarter, did you, look, I don't know if you looked at the box, Stephen A., they made eight of nine three-point shots in the fourth quarter. It's like, watch this. Right. We got you here. Steph well, makes three, and, you know, Clay makes a couple, and Iggy makes a couple, and they just shoot you out of your own gym. It's unbelievable what they're doing. It is unbelievable, but let's break it down. First of all, when you have a presence like Steph Curry, who's the greatest shooter anybody with yeah. sense has ever seen in the history of basketball, I agree. you have somebody that you have to monitor. You have to chase him around. You have to guard him off the ball. He's running around screens and picks. He's doing all types of stuff. You've got to contend with that. But then when you have the other shooters around him, keep in mind, Skip, obviously not Andrew Bogut, who only attempted th three shots and made one. <laughs> The other four guys, Clay Thompson, Harrison Barnes, Andre Iguodala, okay, and Draymond Green, all shot better than 50% for the field last night. All of them. Every one of them. Clay Thompson had 25 on <laughs> 6 of 12 shooting and 3 of 5 from three point range. Harrison Barnes shot 9 of 15 from the field and 3 of 5 from three point range. Andre Iguodala hit three of his four shots and both of his three pointers. And Draymond Green hit seven or nine shots. So this, this level of marksmanship, now obviously they can shoot a little bit, but what helps is that a lot of their shots are open because of how well Steph Curry yep. balls, not just as a shooter, but as a ball handler. You have to watch him so desperately that he ultimately gets a shot to the open man. And even when Draymond Green or somebody else has an open shot, because all eyes are on Curry, Somebody else is open. So when they think that the, the, the assists are a little bit deceiving because it ain't that. Look, I can average 10 assists for the Golden State Warriors. Just give it to somebody when you walk past half court and watch them shoot. I mean, it's really that simple with these guys. I mean, they, they, they're that good in terms of shooting the basketball. But I think, Skip, where we, you and I need to really point this out on this show, Skip Bayless, I got to look at Doc Rivers. That's my man. You know how much yeah. we love Doc Rivers. Yeah. But. The 19-point lead that you gave up by getting out score 49-9 in Game 6 of that Western Conference semifinals in I L.A. Agree. You come back. You're here in the Staples Center. You got a 23-point lead against the reigning defending NBA champions who are undefeated. And they come back, and they're literally on the court, you know, just, just giggling yep. as they're torturing you, they, creeping they up giggling. on you. They were. And, 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 you have, and you have no answer. Nope. So Doc Rivers, I, I hate to say this, Doc Rivers has one or two choices. You're going to have to figure out a way to get more production 
from a DeAndre Jordan to take advantage of the inevitable mismatch his presence with Blake Griffin on the court would cause? Or you're going to have to make a trade yeah. and be able to go small to go up against Golden State. Because I'm here to tell you something right now. As presently constructed, the Los Angeles Clippers cannot beat the Golden State Warriors in a seven-game series. Yeah. You have to find a way. You have to be able to go small at some point. So I'm not talking about Doc Rivers, the coach, because all you can do is design plays, draw plays, yeah. motivate these guys. But you can't play for them. But you, what you can do is you got to get the right personnel. Because if you don't, like, look at the last play, Skip. I mean, you, you, you know, you got a situation with CP3's on fire. And he's giving up the ball, and then Blake Griffin is holding it for Jamal Crawford to come around, and then some ill-advised shot gets jacked up by somebody. It's like, wait a minute. Who's the hot hand? Who can you create a shot for? We know Golden State can do it. The Clippers can't right now against them. Against everybody else, maybe. Against the Warriors. Clippers ain't winning no ti a title with the Warriors standing in their way. As presently constructed. Doc Rivers might need to make a trade in order yep. to eclipse the Golden State Warriors. All right, since you went there, last quick point about Doc. I've always raved about Doc on this show. I've always put him right there both that. with Popovich as one of the top couple yeah. of coaches in this league. I've had mm -hmm. two basketball so NBA sources I've known for a long time. You know who they are. They're highly respected. And both have mentioned yep. to me in the last week, you sure about Doc? Just like that. You sure about him? Yeah, I think I'm sure because he beat Popovich last year in the first round of the playoffs. And, and I was impressed, man. Game seven, Staples. CP3, Rose and Schoen in that game, I give it up. I've been critical of Chris also. But at some point, you're going to have to hold the coach accountable too if they continue to fade. If they, he, well, they added pieces. They weren't the pieces to beat Golden State, but they added pieces to get better and deeper, obviously, to shore up the, the right. second unit. But maybe that's not going to help against Golden State. It's not going to help against Golden State. Not, I mean, Josh Smith, I like Josh Smith. I like Lance Stevenson when he keeps his head on straight. We all know Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce. to be the champion that he is. He was the one that jacked up the shot he driving did. into the lane off balance, you know, going to the left side of the yep. rim from the right side. I, you know, that didn't put him in the strongest position. But here's the deal. That's a unit that can supplement your horses. They can't be your horses and beat Golden State. Yep. And so when you talk about Doc Rivers, I don't have any questions about Doc Rivers, the coach. Just like I have no questions about his assistants and Sam Cassell and Mike Woodson. Them brothers know what they're talking they about. Do. They know basketball. I agree. The problem, the problem I have with right now is if anybody wants to question anything about Doc Rivers, it's Doc Rivers, the GM. You got to find a way to get the right personnel to compete with the Golden State Warriors. They are the champions. They are the standard right now. Not, I, I don't want to hurt your feelings, Skip. Not the San Antonio Spurs. The Golden State Warriors right now are the standard. It's the direction that the league is going in. Even with your Spurs, as elite as they are, Kawhi Leonard is going to be the key because, Skip, you're not going to be able to play both LaMarcus Aldridge and Tim Duncan against them and stop them. You're not going to be able to do it. They can score on you, but you will not stop Golden State. With those bigs in there, you have to be able to go small. Kawhi Leonard is going to be a key. The Clippers don't have anybody like Kawhi Leonard. They don't have that guy that can score and can be a stopper. And that's your problem. Doc Rivers, the, the president of basketball operations, the GM, he has got to find a way to be able to go small to beat Golden State. Because being large with DeAndre Jordan ain't going to get it done. The Clippers will be perennial playoff contenders going home before the finals as long as Steph Curry and those boys are in Golden State with this roster because they can't beat them. Not Last in a seven-game series. Mm -hmm. They can't do Sorry it. Sorry about no, this. No, go ahead. My Spurs beat Golden State at Golden State early last year, and they beat them late in San Antonio when Golden State was flying highest. I'm sticking with my Spurs. All right. I hear what you're saying. I, I'm saying they're the kryptonite. You. Okay.
Speaking of Possibly. that golden standard right. and that 13 and 0 tear, that hasn't happened in over a decade. The last time was 13 years ago. It was the Dallas Maver Mavericks. So again, just to put in perspective what they're oh. doing. And the Packers were on a ridiculous tear, 6 and 0, and now they've dropped three straight. Lately, that bad man has been just bad, not in a good way. Well, that changed this weekend. The Vikings and Packers duke it out in an NFC North showdown. We'll get into it next.